The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next, Catherine and Jay Wolf learn to suffer strong by rethinking everything after a brainstem stroke at age 26. Because I think we're all buying into the lie and worshiping at the idol of a pain-free life. <laughs> and so I'm disrupting that lie. Simultaneously, I'm a joy rebel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm rebelling with joy. I love it. This is a great, great audience, and you're a great audience. You say, oh, you don't want to see me right now. Well, I don't know where you are, what time of day it is, where you're watching, but we want to thank you for watching. You're going to be glad you did. I'm James Robinson. My wife, Betty, and I welcome you to life today. This is an awesome couple. <laughs> the name of this book, Suffer Strong. Uh, Louis and Shelley Giglio wrote this. Louis, we love you. Boy, you did great here recently with <laughs> Sheila and with uh, our son, Randy, and boy, that fabulous... Uh, event on the New Year's Eve in the uh, Mercedes Stadium, 65,000 young people. <laughs> to God be the glory. We love you, Louie. You're saying they wrote the foreword. Yeah. Where's yeah. yeah. the book? Yeah. Yeah. They wrote the book. Yeah, you just said they wrote the book. You know, this girl is right. right here. <laughs> They wrote the forward and an endorsement. So oh, I apologize. absolutely. Forward by, not book by. This is really, I'm just Sorry, Louie, you just watched the book there, right? Yeah, but he's, so he's telling everybody how great this book is. And Louie, I just want to thank you because you're a tremendous blessing. That's and you really hit it out of the park here yeah. and everywhere you go. Well, Catherine and Jay Wolf are our guests, and they've been here before a couple of times. I want them to come back every time they want to. Would you welcome Catherine and Jay Wolf to like today? <laughs> now, you rolled, you rolled in here in a motorized wheelchair, and that's the way you've been coming. I walk in to eat dinner with you earlier tonight before yes. we take, and you're standing there at the table going down the row here, and I'm thinking, what is this? Yes, no, I can stay in your seat. Oh, I can you, stand. You can? Oh, yeah. All right, let's see. So this. I... Is I, that progress? Well, in some ways, for sure, to be able to don't balance... Fall, don't fall over now. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't need help. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I can stand. I can kind of hobble around a little, but I can't really walk. <laughs> However, um, it's kind of a big deal because half my brain... Part a half of the cerebellum part of my brain is missing, so I have no sense of balance. So, and that was that cool. was a stroke. Right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah I okay. had a massive brainstem stroke and <laughs> caused by an AVM that I didn't know I had when I was 26. You are a blessing. Oh, thank yeah. you. And he's a blessing. It, I agree. When you knew you were <laughs> in this trouble, did you wonder if he could would handle it, could handle it, or did you just? No, he would. What I would? knew he would, actually. Wow. Yeah, Jay's, Jay's a good man. His, <laughs> and from good stock, I should say that I have loved for a long time, too. His dad is a Baptist pastor in Montgomery, Alabama, and um, just mm. one of the more Christ-like people I've ever known. Isn't that wonderful? And, um, yeah, Jay has, just as I have, walked with the Lord, never remotely perfectly, but our whole lives. And when you've got so much good Jesus stuff marinating in you, when suffering comes, it just kind of comes out. <laughs> you know, like when your whole life has been about Jesus, you kind of just, there's nowhere else to look when you're at rock bottom but straight up, you know? I have never heard marinated with Jesus and the love of God and all That is good. It's like a barbecue metaphor. Yeah, it soaks you through and through. You know, I told you when you were here before, I know the last time, that I'm ever bit as impressed with the miracle in you as I am with Catherine. Okay, suffer strong. All right, let's just cut to the chase. When it happened... Did you understand the importance of suffering strong? Or is this something that you've learned on the journey? You know, Paul said he could abound and be abased, yeah. but he still knew that he had lost his life in Christ and for Christ to, to live in him was to live. And mm -hmm. it was everything to him. When did you learn that 
suffering strong yeah. is actually a part of the say the Christian journey that a lot of people need to learn. Yeah, I think this uh, the stroke happened 12 years ago, and in an ordinary day with no warning, everything was upended in our life. All the dreams we thought were just ahead of us, we had a six-month-old baby, all of that was hanging by a thread, and this is the reality of the world we all live in. And I think for for both of us, we had this this foundation of Jesus in us that we didn't choose even. We, it was given to us, and then we got to choose it when we stood at this crossroads. What was your of line of work at that time? I was in law school. So with law, uh, the law at uh, Pepperdine, Pepperdine Law School in L.A. had brought us out of California, and it was a couple of weeks before I was to graduate. So there was the timing was really pretty providential because in that season I was able to enter in and step alongside of Catherine and walk through this hell with her so she would know she wasn't alone. And I think in that process, we begin to understand this opportunity we have to suffer strong. Did it upend not... your going ahead and graduating or did um, you manage to go back and so get, I ended get up, to it? Yeah, I ended up, um, it was a total God thing, graduating basically. And then I took the bar a few years later um, and passed it. But the the past 12 years of our life, we've summed up all that we've learned in this message that it's not all hard or all good, but it's both um, in this side of heaven and that the life of Christ shows us that we can hold those two together, that yeah. we can hold the joy and the sorrow, that we don't have to hate our life just because it's not what we thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. We can see this life right in front of us that God has allowed and given us and, and at a certain point come to even cherish it and champion it because it's a gift from him. Now, we never imagined this would be our life. We never imagined some of the struggles that have nothing even to do with the wheelchair or the stroke or any of that. And, and yet that's all of us. This book isn't just for somebody who's dealing with disability or stroke or medical catastrophe. All of us are dealing with this chasm between our actual life and the life that we dreamed when we yeah. were little. And to, to bring those together, to say that there is a redefining of our lives and upending in this upside down kingdom, but that is leading us towards a refined life through Christ. This is how we suffer strong. And this is the message we feel God has given us and, and called us to talk about to the church and outside of the church to say that suffering isn't the end of the story. It's a new beginning. Do you gain the strength by knowing where the ultimate shaping process of suffering takes you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, I remember sitting in the ICU as Catherine was on a million machines. She was on life support for 40 days. They had scraped her brain stem, removed part of her brain. Just they didn't know if she'd ever wake up. And I remember reading through Job, because where else do you go, you know, in the midst of something like that besides Job, and reading in chapter 5 that his hands wound, but they heal. Right. What he, you know, he, he has allowed something. We don't get why, but he is going to be the avenue of the healing also. And we got to lean into that and seek him and, and, and try not to just think we have all the, the ending figured out, but one day at a time together and with our community hoping for us and uplifting us like the church is supposed to do, um, we found the courage to keep leaning in to this life that we didn't ever think we'd be living. And uh, we're a good team, I think, you know, all these how years do later. You, how do you want people to grasp suffering strong, Catherine? How would you sum it up? If you could say in simple terms, I want mm, you to get this. Uh, well, the simple terms are always hard for me. <laughs> Concise, <laughs> it's hard for me. Um, I think the core of this message, so book one, Hope Heals, was like our memoir of what happened to us. Mm -hmm. This book, Suffer Strong, is almost lessons learned from the stroke and really disability. I, I can't drive a car, for instance, and I've gone on to have a second baby, but I'm mothering from a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and you know, our life is very unique, and yet, what we really see in our story that is so universal in everyone's story is what we have done, and it's not us, it's Christ in us that's enabled this, is gone with it. Instead of seeing this as like this huge diversion and this detour and this crazy thing that's going to wreck our lives, we've seen this as, okay, wasn't what we thought life was going to look like, but this is exactly what God had for our story, and we're going to live it well for him, mm -hmm. even if it's not the life we thought about when we were a little girl and a little boy. Mm. And honestly, our world would be different if people lived that way. If they woke up to the life right in front of you that you are living is the new dream. 
the dream you had when you were five years old is no longer the dream. <laughs> this is it, and you're gonna you're gonna go with it. Yeah. And that is what suffering strong is all about. They say that life is not nearly as much about what happens to you mm -hmm. as how you respond to what happens to you. Mm -hmm. And as a believer. I think it's about how you think about what happens to you, how you remember what happens to you, how you recognize what God is doing in your story, how you see the traces of his hand in all of that and how he's at work in it. You know, they're, not they're, a short yeah. answer. <laughs> and you know, like you said earlier, it's not just the physical things that might happen to you, mm -hmm. the disadvantages there, the tragedies. Mm -hmm. It's the it's other things in life. We lost a daughter. Mm -hmm. That wasn't something we planned. Right. You oh, know. gosh. But I can relate to what you say about suffering strong because I never mm -hmm. knew until this happened. I would not have understood what you were saying. Mm -hmm. But suffering strong, we don't get over it. We walk through it. And right. God walks yeah. through it. Yeah. And I have grown in my relationship with Him mm -hmm. that I might never have experienced to the degree that I've experienced it had sure. we not suffered that loss. Right. And yes, we miss her every day. Yeah. But God is good every day. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. it gets better and better. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He'll walk Absolutely. through the valley of every shadow, including the shadow of death, mm -hmm. the shadow of suffering, of pain. Absolutely. And uh, you you have a an exuberance that is a joy that even the minute we walked in the room with you tonight and every time we've been around you, mm -hmm. There's something coming out that's a whole lot bigger than her. It's yeah. bigger than, bigger than a person that's an Olympic athlete. You don't <laughs> well, get this thanks. energy. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it is. It's it's God in her, and just your your face is a reflection of the glory of God. Both Aww. of you. I mean, yours is kind of turned a little bit. You might yeah, my own. That's just to move on one side, but I am. <laughs> I, I, you can laugh. I know, I know that's awkward, but it's true. But here's the thing. I am I call myself um, a lie disruptor because I think we're all buying into the lie and worshiping at the idol of a pain-free life. <laughs> And so I'm disrupting that lie. Simultaneously, I'm a joy rebel. <laughs> I'm I'm rebelling with joy. I love it. it. Yeah, she's just a she's a hoot, isn't she? Got him coming. Not boring. And I'm a hoot. Never boring. Okay, now here we want everybody to get this book. I, yeah, there you go. And this book is just phenomenal to help. Okay, do you all you, do you have a, a website where people could communicate with you? Oh, Are you yeah. doing something they can help you do? All the things, uh -huh. all the things. You uh, tell what them. is it? Sure. So they can go to sufferstrong.com, learn more about the book. But we have a ministry. We've been in ministry full time for seven years, both of us. So together. you go together to to speak. So in we different... speak and we do events or churches or whatever. We, we Somebody's to... having a convention and right. they want to be encouraged. What's kind of neat is uh, with with the disability, which looks like a limitation, that has opened the doors <laughs> to all kinds of different places outside of the church even where we get to share about our hope and what's um, kept us going. And so we we pretty much have story, we'll travel wherever uh, God leads us. Um, but the really cool thing is that, again, this wheelchair was the thing we wanted Catherine to get out of. And we prayed and um, over time we realized this was her seat of honor and that this was the very avenue. She wasn't wheelchair bound, she was wheelchair free. And this is what God does with our own limitations. And so we've uh, right. had our eyes open just to the, the special needs world. It was, not a, it was not a community that we're a part of it that we thought a lot about. And we realized after we heard some of the stats, it's the largest minority in the world and in the US, according to the UN, mm -hmm. and it is the most unchurched people group. And so we looked around, we were speaking at a camp for families with disabilities, and we realized we're the speakers, but these are our people. Right. And now that we know, we can't unknow, we can't unsee what wow. we've seen. And now we are an advocate. We are going to be a voice. We're going to get this wheelchair on every stage we can to say we're with you. We, we, we want to uplift this community that the body of Christ is missing something if it's missing people with disabilities mm -hmm. because it's, it's not in its fullness unless everybody who wants has a seat at the so table. So if they want you to come and share, go to your website. So they you know go to the website. We, we have a, about yeah, we have a camp called Hope Heals Camp that we have run for the past three years. Um, everyone 
Women in yeah. America to come volunteer to work <laughs> out. It's awesome. Need volunteers. So it's, it's for families, um, whole family systems. We even got some people here tonight in our audience who, who have come to be a part of it um, <laughs> to heal and to find rest <laughs> and to find resources and to find each other and to find God in the midst of their stories. And then to go out back to their communities and, and be empowered to go share. And so if the they same. go to the website, they can find out how they might effectively help you. They be help effective us volunteer, help fund it, help All right. spread it, and, help grow. And also, yep. though, Hopeheals. if they wanted to invite you to come for some convention or church or whatever for some event, sure. you're able to do that. Yeah, yeah. like all the time. And do you all go the on, things. Do you go on, uh, receiving do you go Academy on a love Award. Offering when you go, when you go to places, you go by How do you um, have a, do you have a, 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 say, an event cost for you to be able to kind do of, it? Yeah, we, you know, we, we um, make it work. If we feel okay. God's called us to it, but yeah, right. we've we've been doing it full time, and that's that's well, part of what feels. Well, I don't care how it. they do it. I hope that wherever <laughs> they come, they leave oh. wrapped up in your love and your prayers. <laughs> but also pray you'd send them out with a gift of love that that's also that's financially right. supporting everything God put on their heart, because what He's put on their heart to help us understand how to suffer strong is actually helping us understand with a gratitude to God for even the grace to suffer strong, hmm. but understanding the purpose of that is to shape Christ in us. He works all things together for good. The ultimate in that passage, to conform us into the image of Jesus. Jesus in us, the same Jesus in us, now we want to be shaped for he shines forth hmm. as he does in this couple. Do you agree Jesus is manifest in this couple, both the husband and the wife? <laughs> We see Jesus in you. <laughs> Betty and I want that for us as a couple. And James, you have been. Would you like to hear a moment of Romans 8 passage that you were sharing? It. Go for it. And we know in all things God works for God for those who love him who have been called according to his purposes. And those God predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against mm. us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously Amen. give us all things? Who is he that brings any charge against those mm. who God has chosen? It is God who <laughs> justifies, who who is he that died? Who is he? Wait, what's that part? Don't tell me. <laughs> Who is he that died? Christ Jesus, and he rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. I think that's all I can remember until we get to. Um, that sounds like Jesus can, and God to me. Who can separate us from the love of God, can trouble or hardship or persecution or famine Nothing. or nakedness or danger or the sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor the past nor the present, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> That's a, that's a good scripture. I love that passage. You've got to get this. You've got to get the book. All right, we love you. I'm Aww. telling you, Catherine, you and Jay. And we love all of you. And you know what you do? You help us pour God's love out all over the world. Over some of the most forgotten people on the planet who are trafficked in bondage. You're going to see some real miracle workers. You talk about people dressed in a way that you can tell what's going on here. Above all, they're dressed in the love of Jesus and they're rescuing people. Children about to be trafficked, many times getting them out of the trafficking situation with great courage and compassion. Watch closely because you are, I'm telling you, God in you is the key to all of it. Really, watch. They wage war in plain sight, not with weapons of steel, but of heart and mind. Always watching, seeing what was meant to be hidden. Fearlessly, they confront the danger, skillfully unraveling the strategy of the enemy, reclaiming that which was stolen and leaving the thief empty handed. These are heroes and their brand of rescue is not pulling girls out of hell, but sparing them from it altogether. We call them border monitors, but to the thousands of women and children they have saved, they're known as guardian angels. Their mission is simple, prevention through interception. 
With well-trained eyes, they scan the steady flow of humanity pouring through these borders, identifying anything that even hints at a potential trafficking in progress. With unbelievable courage and wisdom, they intervene, refusing to let evil have its way. They know what to ask to uncover the truth and won't hesitate to right what is wrong. They literally stand in the gap between freedom and slavery. Today, our mission partners in Nepal have teams in place at three of the country's largest entry points, rescuing an average of 90 women and children every single month. Their success is astonishing, but our hearts are still troubled by the remaining unmonitored areas being used to traffic victims throughout Asia and beyond. Imagine how many more lives could be saved if we were able to expand our efforts. Our ability to empower more of these heroes here is dependent upon the support of our Rescue Life heroes back home. Heroes like you. That's you. That is absolutely you. Everyone watching, Betty and I joyfully do our part our team going there in these areas. When we first went to Thailand, the sex capital of the world, to think that we were gonna work with two people who ran Hollywood's biggest generators for their biggest production, sold everything, they'd watched us on television, their hearts were moved, they'd been inspired by the mission love. They go and plant their lives there and began renting quarters to get these girls and children that they could find before they got trafficked or after they were trafficked, taking care of them. And we, with your help, joined together to build the House of Destiny, Destiny House, where literally thousands and thousands of children have been rescued. And then other ministries branched off of that, even in the area that you supported. Right now, what you're seeing on the border of Nepal, where these children are being taken into India and exploited and trafficked, we're actually supporting those who are rescuing them. And boy, you talk about discernment and sensitivity. They're able to head them off. Because see, many times these children and even their parents have been convinced, send your child with this person or these individuals, they're going to take them and take care of them. Oh, no, they don't. They take them and use them and sell them. And these people have the discernment of the Spirit of God and the love of God and courage. It takes tremendous courage to be out there literally interrupting the flow of millions and billions of dollars overall worldwide. When you interrupt that flow, you're in danger. But they're dressed up in the great glory and protection of Almighty God and our prayers. But it's all made possible because of the support of our viewers. Every single mission project that we're involved in was birthed in the heart of the missionaries and the workers like you see. The anointing and gifting of God is on them and they've yielded their life to do it fearlessly, faithfully. But they cannot do it. And this is what the missionaries made clear to us. Could you possibly go back and keep us here effective, not only keep them there, but we have with your help, help them expand to get God's arms around more people. Would you right now help us reach, rescue and restore hundreds, hundreds of girls, children, those being trafficked. We have a wonderful group of friends who so believe in what we're doing that they put up a quarter of a million dollar, $250,000 matching gift to match what you give today. It costs $128, that's the average, to start the rescue process. Now then, it'll be doubled. You give 128, it rescues two. Or you give 64, and you've rescued one. $1,280 will rescue 10, now it's 20. Thank you for that love, God. But would you make the gift God puts on your heart? Would you right now go online? Or would you dial that number, that prayer line, and turn it into a lifeline? Go get your bank card, go online, call the number, use that card like a check. If you want to write a check, make it to life, but do call us and tell us you're putting it in the mail. We need to know your support's there. All these wonderful workers, all the people we're reaching out to, totally depends upon your support. We have some beautiful gifts to give you, made by those who've been trafficked, and you are gonna like what they made for you with love. They're learning a trade. They're learning how to do something now to make a real, legitimate, meaningful living correctly, appropriately, because of God's love. Would you continue this outreach? Please, right now, make the gift God put on your heart. Thank you for doing it.
Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $250,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help reach, rescue, or restore one child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift, we'll send you this beautiful freedom bracelet, handcrafted by survivors of human trafficking who want to say thank you for helping those still trapped. Wear it as a wonderful reminder to pray for the outreach. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Freedom Tote. This quality canvas tote bag is made by trafficked survivors who are now learning a new trade and includes spiritual life resources such as books, devotionals, CDs, or DVDs. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children. And you may request our beautiful new bronze sculpture, A Mother's Strength. Please call, write, or make your gift online. I'm telling you, it's exciting to me to know that beautiful little rescued hands made this bracelet. Betty has yeah, one on yeah, right yeah, here. Nice. And the uh, reach and rescue and restore tote bag is really nice. I'm not kidding you. It is. And it's got extra pockets in it. This is a craft they're learning. This is a way to make a living. Let me just say this to you. Suffer strong. Phenomenal truth. Transforming story. If you'd like to have this incredible book, we'll send it to you. You just help us rescue. And I know that, I know Jay and Catherine say, boy, we'd like them to have our book. They're helping rescue people, set them free. We want to be a part of it. So we'll send yeah. you oh, yeah. this book to say thank you. You already are. Would you join Betty and me in thanking Catherine and Jay for being the beautiful people you are dressed up in Jesus. Well, don't come thank back any time that you have something you want to share. you got an open door here. Thank all of you for making life today possible. Thank you for sharing life today. God bless you. God has a plan that is way bigger than our understanding. Trusting God even when we don't get the results we prayed for tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.